It's all changed from my first video of 2023 with a major new direction. That's right, I've left County Down and gone to County Armagh and the market town of Portadown. The railway boom in Ulster started in 1839 with the suitably named Ulster Railway being the first track laid between Belfast and Lisburn and eventually branching out across the southern part of the province. By 1842 the railway had reached the Portadown area although the first station was a temporary one built at nearby Seago and that was replaced in September of that year by one at Watson Street. In 1848 the line was extended to Armagh and a new station at Woodhouse Street was opened, the station's first move. In 1852 Portadown became a two-way junction when the northern part of the Belfast to Dublin railway line reached it and a three-way junction six years later when the line from Dungannon joined the party. In 1861 Portadown's famous tunnel, actually more of an underpass under the railway, was built to relieve congestion at the level crossing previously on the site but that didn't solve the problem. So, in 1863, the station moved for the second time back to Watson Street with a much grander station building and that's where I'm off to now. Here we are on Watson Street and uh, I wasn't too sure if I was going to be able to spot where the, the old station was but since I've looked on Google Street View, somebody has very helpfully erected this colossal picture of the original station so obviously no doubt about where it was between the original pillars. Uh, so this was the third station here can't remember off the top of my head when it was built, 1863 or something. Uh, yeah, I'd uh, better look at my notes a bit more closely. But this was a, a colossal station um, at its peak, up to 90 trains a day called here before they were funneled out towards either Dublin, Armagh or Derry. This station, designed by Sir John McNeill, was known as the Hub of the North because of its size and importance as a three-way junction. All of its four platforms were covered and even better, its waiting rooms boasted cool fireplaces. Over a hundred years later, by 1970, Portadown's fortunes had faded. Although still an important stop on the Belfast to Dublin line, the other branches to both Armagh and Dungannon had long since closed under the management of the dreaded Ulster Transport Authority. Even worse, the lovely old station's days were done. So I'm now at the back of the old station. So this boundary wall that's the railway the existing railway up there and that lovely old tunnel there takes you out to where the front of the station building was I actually just met a fella who uh, asked me what I was doing when I was filming and he said that the station was knocked down when he was about 10 years old and he's given me a few sort of uh, tips and a few pointers as to what was what so if I actually move the camera around hopefully this all stays in focus so up there is currently NI Railways use it for the, the store sleepers and rails it's like the permanent way team they call it but apparently and unfortunately I can't get to it that's the only remaining part of the old station is the former platform 4 it's still there and if I then swing around to this sort of very nondescript looking car park where they had a reservoir that's where the water for all the trains was so there was a pump house that lifted all the water out of this and took it up to where the steam engines were and when they knocked the station down they took all the bricks or some of the bricks from the demolition and used it to fill the reservoir in. What a pity. In 1971 the station moved for the third and to date final time to its current site back on Woodhouse Street. Its name for a while was appended with Craigavon West until they realised the new city wasn't going to happen and it was quietly dropped. But of course, the story doesn't end there for me. Before I went home, I wanted to find those old lines. Here's the station complex from the air today with the Dublin line marked out in purple. And if we zoom in, for whatever reason, whether by coincidence or not, the zebra crossings in the station car park actually mark out the route of the Armagh branch. So we're now overlooking the the A3, right, and if you look, if I can just point that sort of thing in the distance, that is the, that's the spire of the railway station. There is talk of this branch being reopened, which of course would be great, but they have been talking about it for rather a long time, and the Northway does kind of get in the way.
This scruffy bridge near the station once carried the northern branch out to Dungannon, and a bit further out I soon found another relic of it. So I've walked out down Corcoran Road and got as far as Montague Street. And when you get there, there's something that looks awfully like a submerged bridge. So I'm on top of that now, and lo and behold, if you look over the other side of it, just there's scrubland out that direction, that way. And that is where the track bed to what remains of the Dungannon line begins. But except for the land right beside the station, there's actually very little of the track bed that's been built over. So the North Way claimed some of the Armagh branch, and Corcoran Road was built at the very start of the Dungannon branch. But who knows, if these rail proposals take off, maybe Portadown could become the hub of the North once more, and maybe even need to move again for a fourth time.